What's up, welcome back to the channel. My name is Simon Servita. So I went on a live stream and I asked you guys to tell me your favorite production tricks. And yeah, this is just a compilation of random, fun, miscellaneous production tricks that you should try in your next beat. By the way, the program that I'm using is FL Studio. And to celebrate the new 20.8 update, Image Line is letting me give away three copies of FL Studio Producer Edition. So if you want the details on the giveaway, that's gonna be in the description below. I want you guys in the chat to just type out a bunch of different ideas and like production tips and we'll try it out on the DAW and that'll be the video. I give one first and then we get the ball rolling. Live record automation. All right, for example, we have a melody, right? Let's say we want to automate reverb normally in FL Studio, you can right click, create automation clip and you can manually you know, insert little automation points like this. Which is good, because this is like really accurate, but most of the time you don't really need to be that accurate and it's kind of nice to have a human feel to it. So what I like to do nowadays is create a new pattern. We have it the duration of whatever the other pattern is. We go to record notes and automation. And then when we start that, I'm just gonna move around knobs however I feel like it. So example. Yeah, the good thing about that is it took five seconds and we can do like a bunch of other parameters as well. So I can do the EQ, just run it back. Reverse kick leading into some other kicks, great for transitions and hits way harder. That is a good tip. The easy thing we can do is get the kick, drag it out, take it, reverse it, and we line that up with the next downbeat. Make the volume a bit lower so that the actual kick hits harder than the other one, because then it'd sound like a swell. Yeah. Only use an EQ if there's a bass active. Deactivate it to bring back the low frequencies in an instrument when there is no bass to keep the track full. Or is there some kind of like cool side chaining idea that we can do? I tried it again and I was trying to be a bit extra about it. I got a P controller going into a low cut on an EQ. The problem is the cut isn't gonna be consistent based on the 808, so it's best to just keep it simple. So either create an automation clip that cuts the low end out of that certain section, or you can just simply duplicate the sample, bring it into a new mixer track, then EQ it, replace the old one. Use Riff Machine with perk samples to get interesting patterns. What's Riff Machine? Is that a plugin? Okay, how does this work? Oh, so what's those dice? Oh. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, okay, so it's kind of like a randomizer, I guess. Notes are different, a lot of cool velocities. Does it do like other parameters? Panning it, that's cool. So I guess this is supposed to be for like generating arpeggios and melodies, but yeah, this is a cool thing if you want to create like some cool percussion. If you're about to do a drop, don't just add things to the drop, remove things. This is actually a really good tip for arrangement. If you want to make like that really high impact, just a really strong, strong drop, it's all about contrast. And that's why uh, removing stuff before is a really good tip. So it's really nice to just kind of have a little bit of silence, high energy, build, build, build. If it goes to another high energy place, there isn't that hit. You need a bit of... You need a bit of quiet. You need just kind of, it's just like hills. It's bounce, that's all it is. Just going back and forth. When exporting stems, leave gaps for the reverb. This is a, this is a huge tip. Collaborating with people, it's kind of just good. Uh, it's a good habit to have. Let's say there's some, let's say you're stemming out a melody. So let's say this one had a bit of reverb and delay at the end of it. And then I export it as stems. There's gonna be a bit of bleed over from this instrument to the next one. If you wanted a clean version of this, you can't really get it because the downbeat is a little bit, it's a little bit dirtied up by this. Best thing to do is just give it a bit of space. So I would just ear it out and just see where it kind of dies down and then put the next melody over like a clean bar line. Yeah, kind of dies down around there. So I'll put it there and then that'll be it. 
adding ambience in general to stuff is like the best way to fill out that awkward empty silence so i like to do like just soundscapes or it can be vinyl noise i have a bunch in my capital drum kit so here's like this is bathroom exhaust fire so this is forest you know if you have a really bouncy melody with little pauses it's just nice to have this kind of thing to be in between there just make sure you use it very tastefully make sure you eq out any lows or any harsh frequencies before it's in the beat. It, you shouldn't notice it. That's when it's good. Use a chord helper mode in piano roll so that people with lack of music theory can place chords. That is a good tip. There is this button here that just gives you, it just gives you pretty much all the chords. Like, and it gets, it gets deep, deep, deep. You know, major ninth sus four, clang. And then all you have to do is click where you want it to be. All right, this is gonna be major. And then I want a minor, this minor nine is this. Maybe a major seventh? What the? Uh, uh. So the thing about the chord helper is it only does it in root position. And it's kind of weird when voices are jumping around all over like this. So make sure you just, you know, bring some notes up and down the octave so that it stays nice and compact. That chord's wrong. Use mixer sends with reverb to help save CPU. This is an unbelievable tip. Thank you, Sidewave. So right now I'm at a two. We're at a two right now. There are some reverbs that are really good sounding, but they take a massive amount of CPU. So for example, Spring, this one. And this one sounds really nice. But this single instance of reverb gets me at a 20. So this is my piano track, and then this is my guitar track. And then obviously I need some for my vocals. And then obviously I need some for my, uh, for my banjo. Yeah. It's going to pile on the more stuff you had. What you have to do is use a send track. You kind of have on the side that you can route every single other track into. We can duplicate the exact same reverb over multiple instruments by just routing this audio into here. Make sure we, we don't do it exclusively to this track because then it's just going into full reverb. So it's supposed to be routing here and here. It's the amount of reverb I want because this is adjusting the audio signal coming into that mixer track. So if I want a lot of reverb, I can blast that. Ooh. Or if I want a little bit, just a teens. I can have it like that. We only have one instance of reverb, which saves a lot of CPU, but we're getting a you know, really consistent reverb between every single track, which is good. If you want to test if your beat is ready for vocals, you can just download acapellas from YouTube and listen to how it sounds. All right. If you guys wonder where I get my acapellas from, I get it just from YouTube. I type in rap acapella. If you want a really high quality one, just type in studio acapella. I use this one specifically for one of my beats. All of a sudden we got it. We got it. Yeah. So this is like reverbed and delayed and perfectly mixed and EQ'd and compressed. All you have to do is drag and drop it into your beat and then match the tempo. Some of them you might get these weird EQ sounds, but the thing you're mostly looking at is just kind of the pocket and if it's not too busy sounding. Sometimes I like to do acapella first and then build around it so I never have to do more, but you can do it the opposite way as well. So uh, make a beat, put the acapella in, and then if it's too much, just start deleting stuff and that's it. Uber Kraken says, most people not listen to music through headphones, so try listening to your mixes in the car. When you're getting to that final stage and you're about to you know, send it out to streaming platforms, it's good to listen to your mix in multiple devices. So not only your monitors, but if you have a pair of headphones, if you have a pair of bad headphones, if you you know just put it on your phone, listen to it through the phone speaker, listen to it in the car. There might be some places where certain frequencies pop out or it's too muddy or the bass is too high. So it's good to get multiple perspectives. Immediate recording is this is a really good tip immediately putting down your ideas just to make sure you're holding on to that inspiration as soon as you get it so a lot of songwriters are just mumbling into their phones and recording just melodies and different kinds of flows that they can get in their heads and so they don't forget it as well because a lot of ideas are coming really quickly this also can go for production to start beatboxing you can beatbox over a melody just to get that idea of the drum groove you want as well or you can, you know, hum melodies over some drums or, you know, create counter melodies. Just getting 
you know, a place where you can record stuff just to get all those ideas out there as quickly as possible because time is really important. Layer fully with drums, like random sounds to make it organic. That is a good tip. It's cool for like sound design. Like when I was making Capital Drum Kit 3, I was doing a lot of that. This lo-fi snap that I made is a snap, but there's also like this sound of leaves crunching. Like I think like leaves stepping on Foley. And that just makes a weird little tail. Sometimes I can just get a snare. I can put RC20 over the master and create, you know, a little vinyl tail. Uh. Like you just went crate ding or something. You just chopped this up from a record. That's for like lo-fi. Adding Foley and stuff like that in general is really good. So just texture, texture to your drums. This is a classic. Chord extensions, make your beat more interesting, all right? If I have a little A minor chord, ooh, and a little D minor chord, ooh, it's a little, little bland. But if you add the extensions, you could add the seventh, add the ninth. Ooh. How about that? You know, just a little, just a little bit more going on now. That's like a deep, deep topic. So uh, if you want to look more, that's this is what it's called. Or check out my course pro level beats. <coughs> but just add more, add more voices to your chords. Put growth speed on a simple hi hat pattern and try the complex presets. It can add so much variation. You know what? I don't think I do this. Simple hi hat pattern. So just simple two step. And we get the growth speed. Oh, here, complex. Ooh. Oh, there's some reverse in here. Yeah, this is really dynamic because you can get like rhythms as well as like different pitches and stuff. Yeah, this is sick. This is super sick. And it's easy too. Sidechain reverb on vocals for nice ambient tail without losing vocals in the reverb. Okay, I did not explain this good on the stream, so here we go. Here's my reverb sense, so I can click this in to add reverb. The wish blowing up my phone, calling and text the same. But there are certain parts in the melody where there's a lot of space, like here. Phone. And then there's other parts where it's just a lot of talking. Fly on God and I pull up in the spotlight. Oh. So this method is cool because it fills in the reverb for any situation. So what I'm gonna do is open up Fruity Peak Controller. So this is going to measure an audio signal coming in and move a certain knob accordingly. So the knob I'm gonna link it to is the reverb set. So I'm gonna go here, link to controller. It's important you go to peak as well as inverted and then click accept. And then all we're doing is adjusting these knobs to get it fine tuned correctly. The volume is gonna dictate how much the knob moves when audio is playing. Wish blowing up my phone. So you can see it's turning off, so I don't want too much. Wish blowing up my phone. Calling and text, same old message. Now you can see when there's more singing, it turns down, but when there's longer notes, it starts to turn back up. Wish blowing up my phone. Calling and text, same old message. Telling me to come right home. Oh, save mixer presets. That is massive, massive. So you can probably do this in any job, but you know, just have. Mixer presets saved for specific situations. So I have one for basic vocals. So if I have like singing vocals, I'll just throw that on. You know, this is a long mixer chain with a lot of different plugins going on. Just EQing out the lows and then I have to get the compressor to be set right. And then I need the second compressor. And then I need to have the saturation turned up to a certain point. That's just really tedious. That's gonna save you seconds start to add up eventually. I have rap vocals. Like anytime you make something, it's good to save it as a preset. Like I need one for ad lib still. Can't go wrong with that. It's just great for workflow. I'm all about the workflow. Take the first syllable out of verse, hook, put 100% wet reverb, record that, reverse it, and use it as your riser pretty much. So what we can do is take out the very first syllable. We be. So I kind of just want like the vowel of it, the E. We. Just like that first part, isolate it like that. We. I'm going to put a whole smattering of reverb. So it kind of creates a riser. And then I can just take that riser tail, put it in my project, reverse it. So this is like what's used in a lot of intros to songs. And then they just line it up. So you're getting this first word reversed reverbed into the song so it'd usually be like intro 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 right before the you know the beat drops and the the vocals come in 
<laughs> we be talking, we be on it, we be falling fast. For a kick boost of frequency a lot around 120 to 40, 140 hertz, and then put a sausage pattern on top of the EQ to make that kick super hard. Bold, bold statement. All right, this is a nice, warm, soft kick. All right, you know what? Let's just turn it up. We're turning it up. Okay. And then add sausage fattener. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Oh, that frequency really does something. That's kind of cool. All right, I like it. Add chorus to make chimes vibier. No idea what this is, okay. All right, chimes plus chorus equals vibe here apparently. Okay, without. And with. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> wait. That does kind of just tickle. That just like, woo. <laughs> Okay, good tip. I was sleeping on that. All right, interesting. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Big thank you to everybody who contributed to the video. Let me know if you want to see another video like this again. Yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you guys soon. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment. If you like this video, leave a like. If you really like this video, subscribe. If you didn't like this video, leave. Just leave. Get out of here.